Ladies and gentlemen, you find me at the windswept inland links of Scotts Craig. deepest, darkest, most beautiful Caledonia. That's right, deep cut ancient Britain reference there. You like that? <laughs> I am gonna be testing out a golf ball that defies convention, that will show you that actually maybe spending hundreds of pounds per year on premium balls might not be the best way forward. And this incredible golf ball, which I will be showing you today, is a range ball, a yellow Strixon range ball. Now what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to be playing 10 holes here at Scott's Craig. It was going to be nine, but I almost definitely didn't miscount and when we got to nine. So get down into those comments. Let me know what you think I'm going to shoot. This is a one piece construction range ball. It isn't 100% compression. It's just one that you'd find at a lot of ranges around the world. I'm also going to be heading back into the studio during this video, testing this ball out against some premium competition, but also explaining some of the differences out here on the golf course. So everybody, I'm using Shrixen yellow ball with a uh, line around it. By the way, just a quick note here, the line around this ball, like I don't understand why manufacturers like haven't done this. So I've got Kieran and David, I'm looking at David. I'm not just looking at like a pine tree in the background. I'm looking for reassurance basically. Par five, ninth hole. Let's see what this does for distance. Wind's off the left. Aim at that left bunker, there's loads of room right. It's like drift on the wind. Oh, I tell you what, what a start that is. Oh, what a start that is. <sighs> like to announce for the 2021 season, I'll be switching to Strix and Range Balls. Are we ready for some mathematics? Okay, so 484, I've got 160 yards left on the nose. So 484 minus 160, so that's 334 yards. Oh, my math teacher would be so proud of me. <laughs> Get down into those comments below. Let me know what ball you're using, how much you spend. Let's have a discussion about golf balls. Could have said that differently, but I didn't. <laughs> Because golf balls are expensive. I mean, a sleeve of Pro V's, you're looking at about $15 now, probably about 12 pounds. And if you're someone who goes through balls a lot, that's gonna cost you a lot of money. I'm gonna play this as I normally play my golf ball. So 160 yards, wind left to right, would be just like a three quarter eight iron with a draw holding it up. Now these golf balls, off the tee and on full shots, I'm not like holding out loads of hope. It's around the green zone, the short ones I'm excited by because I've got a really soft cover. There are those balls you can hit that low fizzy spinner. Oh my God, big good. I don't want to blow my own trumpet because I don't own one. That was decent, double decent, mate. That fist pump would have dislocated my shoulder if that had gone in. That almost missed. <laughs> it's a birdie, it's fine, it's fine, never happened. Absolutely loving this course so far as well. Looks like such a warm and welcoming clubhouse. Maybe get some chips after. Get some chips after. Oh, get some cheesy chips. I'm literally never leaving this golf course. Literally never gonna play another ball again. <laughs> the only difference on that one, there was a definite, kind of got to, I would say, three quarters of the way in its flight. And it just had a little bit of dive out of the air. It certainly didn't carry through the air quite as much as I would have expected. Obviously we'll see a little bit more with that data. Try that middle bit. Looks all right. In fact, I'd say that looks better than all right. I'd say that looks above average. 
Well, that was uh, an absolutely abysmal putt and it was actually left to right. I think it was the ball slightly off center waiting in this range ball, I think. Um, don't, I don't think it could have been me. That'd be crazy. Four hundred and fifty-three yards, a beastie eleven hole. Looks like it goes kind of down a little bit. Sun is starting to break through. This feels like the perfect opportunity to see if I can hit a high bomb draw. Oh my word! Come on, wind, carry it past that bunker. Go, 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 go! Oh, <gasps> that's gigantic! Like it doesn't matter what ball I was using there. I kind of almost drop kicked it, came a little bit high, a little bit off the toe, carried zero backspin, hit the back of the bunker. We're on 453 yards. I'm going to predict I've got 110 yards left in. I reckon that is a 340 yard drive. Pins on the front, so it goes slightly beyond this, not the end of the world. And it has gone slightly beyond. In all fairness, it kind of popped up and out of that lie. Turn in. Got past the hole. I've been struggling with me putting recently, just getting the ball up. So anything that finishes even three foot past them, absolutely fine with. I love, the, I love the alignment on it. I really, really do. Something else we're gonna have to see actually, if you think about what these balls are designed for, they're designed to be hit like continuously, bang, bang, like for a year. So I reckon they'll be mega hard wearing as well, which would be cool. And one of the issues, if you are looking for like quality control, like the seam of the golf ball here, you can see it's kind of a pretty weird. <laughs> Got a bit of a weird angle, yeah. But it is, a, it is a solid construction, so it's not like the layers and the mantle's gonna be messed up. It's time for a stinger driver. Let's see how low this ball flight can go. I'm confident because of the way it feels that I can get this going low. Again, will that construction allow for the low and the distance? Oh my, oh my God, seriously. Seriously, like seriously, if that looks as good as it did to the naked eye. Just poetry, it's just poetry. It's just poetry, mate. So a one-piece golf ball is literally that. It's just a big ball of plastic with dimples on it. A four-piece ball has different constructions. So what will happen with a four-piece ball is when you hit the ball softer, the outer layers will interact a little bit more and that will help the ball spin and land softly. And when you hit the ball harder, the inner core compresses and that's what springs it out towards the target with a little bit more speed and velocity. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for that extra construction. Now you might expect a range ball versus a premium ball. The range ball would lose every time. And I fully expect that to happen here, but you never know. So what we're gonna do is put the range ball up against the Shrixen Z-Star XV, which is their tour performance four piece ball. High spin around the green, low spin on drives. It's the ball you want if you're gonna try and go on tour and stuff. It's a good ball. So let's have a look and see numbers wise how the range ball performs. First little test we're gonna do 130 yards. So it's just a nice solid wedge shot. Let's see what happens first of all with backspin and that control of distance. That's a decent start. So we're gonna have five shots here with the Shrix and range ball resplendent in yellow today. That was a bit blessed. Okay, now we shall move on to the Shrixen Z-Star XV. Is there a longer name in golf? And what we're looking for really is just distance control, the amount of backspin that's being generated. I don't personally think at this distance, we're actually gonna see loads of difference. I think the main difference is gonna be when you start to hit drivers, but we will see. Oh wow, look at that. Holy moly. Listen, I've been to the gym this morning. <laughs> I just carried 142.
Okay, well, I mean, there's a definite distance difference here between these. So it's actually an argument to be made on these first shots that actually the range ball might be better for the wedge shots than the Shrixen Z-Star XV. Now the Z-Star XV, it is designed to launch higher, spin a little bit less, it is a distance ball. So I could do this comparison with, let's say, a normal Vice Pro, so not the Pro Plus, but a softer golf ball. However, we are talking about a premium golf ball here. It's the most expensive one that Shrixen do versus their cheapest. And yeah, you can see there's a definite difference here between the amount of backspin. So backspin on average here for the first five shots, so using a range ball, 10,375. The distance control, I personally think was a little bit better, even though I did hit a few squiffy shots. You know, the maximum I want to see a full wedge shot go is 134. We do need to take into account it is very warm in here. I am quite loose as well from this morning. But then the second five shots, average backspin here of 9,195. Launch angle higher, peak height higher. So what you'd be seeing with the Z-Star XV is that they fly through the air much further. They land with a much steeper descent angle. And that actually would make up for a little bit less backspin. Because you're coming steeper down, it's going to stop quicker rather than coming in flatter. But even so, like you could say, well, I might want a little bit more wedge spin. This theme will just continue with the irons. 140 yards after the Stinger driver of dreams. I'm gonna try another little shot, which I know I can pull off with my ball. Just like a really slow, soft seven iron. Getting those hands ahead and it just like drills down into the wind and then it just develops a little bit of spin as it goes. Ah, oh, I just pulled it. Ah, oh, struck it well. Damn. Ah, felt good, felt nice. Uh, if you blindfold me, especially with irons, if you blindfold me when I'm hitting these shots, I won't be able to tell you it's like a bad ball. It feels soft, it feels nice. <laughs> Did I say, I won't be able to tell you it's a bad ball. My own judgmental nature coming through there. I apologize, I'm sorry about that. Sometimes you need to unearth your own biases, you know what I mean? Pointing three put par in the middle of that. However, still two under and got par five, another hole and another par five to finish. I don't know what 17 is. We're gonna hit two shots here as well. I'm gonna go Shrixen range ball and then I'm gonna hit one of my golf balls, Vice Pro Plus. Let's see which one comes out on top. Um, blind tee shot, I don't know what's up there. Both these balls could end up in a ditch, so there'd be no clear winner, but we'll see. Oh, cut hard, cut hard, cut hard, cut hard. Oh, I think that's actually quite good. <laughs> I think those trees just look like a lot closer than they are. We'll try and hit this on the same line, not a guarantee. Yeah, that's a very similar line. Okay, let's see. Honestly, honestly I'm not, I'm not joking. Look, look, come, come up. There's the vice. There's the Shrixen. They're literally, literally equidistant. Um, I mean, there was a lot wrong line, by the way, as you might be able to tell. I think that's actually quite good. <laughs> but yeah, they're literally next to each other. I didn't, I didn't strike the vice as well as the range ball, in all fairness. But well, there we go. Um, the more pressing question, really, is what the hell I'm going to do here? Because it's a par five, but does this mean I'm going to have to lay up? Well, it's been a great trip to Scotland. Um, really, really enjoyed myself. I only wish I could have stuck around 
Right, just don't think about it. You got the line, a little fade out there. Sit down. It's all right, just right with Sammy. Yeah, not too bad. Tricky these greens, they're rolling really nicely, but tell by the course, I mean, this is Scotland. It's just, it just looks so dry, really dry. But this is, this is something you have to fact check. I think I said this to you, David, the other day. I'm sure like St. Andrews in the East Coast around here gets less rainfall than Sydney in Australia. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody told me that and it's probably laughing because it was a joke, but I think that's correct. Oh wow, yeah, look at that go. A little bit, maybe if it's firm, it would have held its line, but went right. Sim 2, range ball, then the XV. So I'm imagining that this is gonna fly a little bit less far, not as far. Tell you what, it's a good start for the range ball though. That's a little bit higher off the face, so it should have reduced spin, but Ball speed there, so ball speed there, down to 161. Club head speed was at 119, so it was a decent speed swing. Backspin at 27. I'm going to try and keep my swing pretty much the same, obviously 120, see how the XV gets on. I'm expecting more distance from this. It's kind of like a off the top of that one. Yeah, still definitely got a lot more distance in it. Feels a lot harder, feels a lot low spinnier. I wasn't having my best ball striking day by any means, but the ball speed with the range ball, 162.5, on average there with the Z-Star XV, 168. So that's six miles an hour quicker, but that is also taking into account one ball speed that was at 160 and one ball speed that was at 164. Like my three decent strikes with the XV, that was 170, 177, 172. So between my two best strikes with those balls, there's like 30 miles an hour difference. Backspin lower with the XV, launch angle higher. So again, that high launch, low spin. And the distance difference is quite extreme, really. Average carry of 300 with the XV versus 274 with the range ball. 294 total distance with the range ball. 324 total distance with the XV. So 30 yard difference. So I would love to be able to say that yes, Play with a range ball, it's a hell of a lot cheaper and it's great, there's no difference, but the reality is there's a difference. If you're playing like around a little course though, and your priority really is just short shots around the green. My, uh, my energy reserves are dwindling, however. 363 yards, kind of wind off the right and down. Time for a high bomb draw, ladies and gentlemen. Stop it, I know. Quickly, go get a cup of tea oh, or something stronger, because oh, you're going to need it. I'm going to need it. Come on, everything you've got now. Oh, God, what a great line. It's just not hooky. That is an incredibly disappointing end to that drive. Bang in the middle of the fairway and it's nowhere near the green. I'm sorry. Hopefully you're going to enjoy your drink though, whatever it may be. Almost hit you with a club and almost tripped over there. In my opinion, and obviously this is just based on experience, like that high bomb draw with the vice there, that'd have been a long way further down. I mean, it was only 360 yards, just spun up. But this is the type of shot where I actually fancy this ball to be quite good. Oh, 
that's popped up. That wasn't, uh, oh, it's got a false front, this green as well. That wasn't the ball, that was me. Oh, actually it wasn't bad, it just shot that way. I should have uh, read that a little bit more thoroughly. Man, it was a bit of a uh, bit of a surprise after all the other holes. That's a bit disappointing. Last hole is a par five, though, and listen, an eagle covers up all manner of sins. Last hole, it's not a par five. It's a 396 yard par four. Like, it's so far away from being a par five. It's never, ever been a par five. <laughs> well, it went low. Look at the chase on it. Mate, zoom in quick. Right at the bunker. Just right of it. Still going, still going. I, I mean, it's literally the worst, best shot you've ever seen. Hands off the club. Is it Hideki Matsuyama in though? Yeah, a bit short, a little bit chunky that. Real limp home. Over that slope and drip down. It's probably my best put of the day in all fairness. First takeaway from this video, can a manufacturer please come out with like that broken concentric ring, that broken line around? Oh. It's meant to be. <laughs> so there's a lot of data to digest in that video and 10 holes. One under is not too bad considering my mental and physical collapse. But the question you've got to be asking yourself is, when you pick a golf ball, are you going on reputation alone? Are you going on price alone? Because what the data shows to an extent and what the on-course performance has shown definitely is that you can get around the golf course with literally the cheapest ball you can get hold of. Now, this isn't an open invitation to raid your local driving range. Don't be that person. But hopefully it might show that you don't need to break the bank when you're getting golf balls. All right, guys, just want to say massive thank you for watching. Huge thank you to Scott Craig for having us down as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I can't even speak anymore, so I'm going to go.